in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed morning i intend for us to be out of here within the shortest time possible greet someone by your left and right and then please be seated god bless you be generous greet someone by your left and right amen 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 please be seated please be seated hallelujah every year as god grants me the privilege of celebrating a new year and a new season i um, usually take the time to do a broadcast this has been a culture that has been maintained through many years and um, i usually would bring in a few thoughts that would strengthen our lives the global family and then strengthen the body of christ also so um, we thank God for this privilege, this opportunity that God has given. I'll be discussing a few things with us very quickly. And um, just like you heard before I came up, even though it's a birthday broadcast, but it's nothing short of an experience in God's presence. Every opportunity in God's presence is an opportunity for lifting, an opportunity for encounters. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 12, please. I'll read 2 and 3. Genesis chapter 12. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Verse 3 says, I will bless them that bless thee, and curse he that cursed thee, Let's read the last sentence in concert. One to read. And in thee shall all the families. One more time. Amen and amen. Our world today is full of people who are sad. Our world today is full of people who are depressed. Full of people who are frustrated full of people who are suicidal our world today is full of people who have lost hope lost joy lost meaning to their lives and the reason is largely because people crave for lives of meaning lives of purpose they want to live impactful lives but sadly for many they do not have the opportunity to be mentored and to be shown the way to an excelling life, the way to an impactful life. Hallelujah. Psychologists teach us that one of the indices that is the major index, in fact, that is responsible for happiness is progress. The moment you see that your life is making constructive progress, you are happy, you are inspired, you are motivated. Hallelujah. I was very touched during the prayer session you know the many things as uh, Kenny led us through the prayer session it's amazing to know that your life can be a blessing and this is not just for men of God and so I thought to dedicate today to share with us very briefly keys to a life of impact meaning and fulfillment just as my broadcast gift to the global family and the body of Christ keys to a life of impact, a life of meaning, and a life of fulfillment. So we have a promise that has been left us that in Christ, beginning from Abraham and through Christ and now to us, that our lives should be blessings. It's not just that we should be blessed, 
in and through Abraham, in and through Christ, but that my life and your life within the span of our lifetimes should be a great blessing. And there are keys. The Bible says, in fact, Jeremiah 29 and verse 11, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. That means in God's design for you and I, there is an expected end. We're not just biological mistakes roaming around the earth hoping for the day that we die or the day something tragic happens. Life can be richer. Life can be fuller. Life can be more impactful. John chapter 10 and verse 10. Jesus was speaking and he said, The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He says, But I am come that ye may have life. And that you will have that life more abundantly. Amplified says to its fullest. To its fullest. You can have a richer and a fuller life that is even to overflowing. Hallelujah. And so very quickly, I want to run a few keys that I've penned down here. These are keys that have helped my life by the grace of God. If there is anything good that you have seen, that you have celebrated in this life that speaks to you, I can tell you that they are largely a product of walking in keeping with these keys. And I'm praying that someone here and someone who is following, who has been praying and crying for a life of impact, a life of meaning, a life of purpose, that you will find value in these keys as I read them out and that it will inspire you to make up your mind that the last meaningless birthday you ever had was the last one. The last profitless birthday you had would be the last one that from that time hence, every new season would give you a reason to celebrate. Yeah. I have said this and I'm sure that everyone here should have heard it, that birthdays are not just commemorations of the day you were born, but the fulfillment of the reason for which you were born. Many people's idea of celebrating birthday is just commemorating the day. So if you were born June 12th or January 1st or December 25th, every December 25th you celebrate and commemorate the day you were born. But birthdays are supposed to be celebrated on account of the fact that you are living out the reason for which you were born. The reason for which you were born is greater than the day you were born. There are people who don't know the day they were born. Is that true? Yet they lived impactful lives. If you ask Abraham, when were you born? He would not be able to tell you. There probably was no system of measuring it in terms like we know. If you ask Joshua, if you ask all of these patriarchs, when were you born? Even some of our very old people in Nigeria and across Africa, they cannot tell you the day they were born. They can only describe events. I was born when they were fighting. Are we together? That's all they can remember. But they can't pin down. They don't know whether it was a Tuesday. They don't know the year. They don't know the month. They don't know the day. Yet, they lived impactful lives. So a greater reason to celebrate birthdays is not a commemoration of the day you were born, but the reason, the fulfillment of the reason why you were born. Key number one, to live an impactful life, a meaningful life, and a life of purpose and fulfillment. The first key is to have a genuine experience with Jesus. You would think this is a very simple statement. I'm not preaching this is a broadcast to charge our hearts. But I can tell you that the starting point of any glorious destiny is at the instance of your encounter with Jesus, the Son of the living God. There are four blessings you get from your encounter with Jesus. Number one, abundant life. Number two, joy. Number three, peace. Number four, meaning or purpose. These are the four blessings you get when you encounter God. It's important you know this. When you encounter the Lord Jesus Christ and you make him savior of your life, 
the Lord of your life and your destiny, there are four major blessings. Number one, which is the greatest of them all, is eternal life, abundant life. You are translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, the Bible says. But in addition to it, you also receive joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Joy that is not based on circumstances, is not based on things happening well or not. It's a terrible way to live if you have to live based on how well things are or otherwise. Your joy, your happiness, everything will vacillate according to events. But the believer has an advantage. You can find joy. Joy even in the midst of storms. Joy even in the midst of results. Number three, peace. Jesus said, my peace, I give you my peace. I live with you not as the world gives. The world today is in desperate need of peace. Desperate need. Desperate need. The policies that are formulated across parliaments, across the globe, are to enhance peace. We have war-torn nations today, and regardless how creative the citizens are, in the presence of war and the absence of peace, there is no progress, there is no productivity. There are many nations we know that have been fighting over the last one year. Some have been fighting for decades. Reconciliation attempts have been made, but, you know, it's failed eventually. And you find out that those nations always stay stagnated. Peace is a very powerful factor. And then meaning and purpose. So the first key to an excelling life, a life of impact, is to have a genuine experience with Jesus. Many people in church, many people who want to live meaningful lives, they do not want to follow this route of Jesus. They prefer to follow other routes. But I can tell you the Bible declares that Jesus is the way. Not a way. Not one of the ways. When it has to do with destiny actualization, living a life of impact and meaning, it starts with Jesus. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am life. Number two. The second key that is responsible for a life of impact, an enviable destiny indeed, is to contend for transformation. The power of a superior belief system. The power of a superior belief system. The power of a superior belief system. Nobody is born transformed. Write that down, please. Nobody. Transformation is not inherited. Nobody inherits transformation. We are born with all kinds of mindsets, genetically conditioned and environmentally conditioned. Please lend me your attention. Nobody is born transformed. Transformation is not a gift. Transformation is not an inheritance. Nobody inherits a transformed mind. Nobody is born transformed. We are taught that there are two major ways that we are conditioned mentally. Number one is our genetic programming. Number two, which is a greater basis for our, our mindsets, is our environmental programming. If you were born, say, in China, you will most likely be speaking Chinese. If you were born in, say, Europe, you will most likely be speaking with the accent of a, an European. Are we together now? There are people who were born in the north and it didn't matter if they were Yoruba or Igbo or Hausa because of the environmental conditioning. Some of them would speak northern languages with such fluency. There are people who are northern born who speak Yoruba even more than those who are born from the west. So our environment condition us and it's important for us to know this. Listen to me. I wrote something here while preparing my notes. A teacup cannot retain the same amount of water as a large storage tank. A teacup cannot desire the destiny of a large storage tank. It is not possible. Are we together? The difference is capacity. It will be foolish for a teacup to desire the destiny of a large GP water tank. Their capacities are not the same. All of them can hold water, 
but a teacup may just hold just just little enough for you to be able to take your tea or coffee but a large water tank can preserve water you can take your bath from there you can use it to cook you can do a lot of things so many people are carrying the mentality of a teacup but they desire the destiny of a large water storage tank the good thing about mindsets is that you can transform your mind you can be transformed like the bible says it says do not be conformed to this world romans 12 verse 2 but be ye transformed be ye transformed it's an active expression be ye transformed don't wish transformation don't hope for transformation you contend for transformation i've taught you extensively listen i would say second to my encounter with the lord jesus christ and the ministry of the holy spirit about the greatest gift i know that has helped in making me become who i am now by the grace of god is the power of a superior belief system i will always challenge you your life will revolve around your belief system something you believe about god or don't believe about god can leave you defeated something you believe about satan or not believe about satan can leave you defeated something you believe about failure something you believe about success i have spent my time teaching here and teaching our global audience on principles that help to shape your beliefs implanting the wisdom of god teachings like lessons from an overcomer i recommend that again go and listen to it again for instance in that teaching i taught you that ignorance is not a demon you don't cast away ignorance by conducting deliverance over it that the cure to ignorance is to contend for light do you know just having that change of mentality can bring you into victory so you stop giving excuses i remember in that teaching i taught you that it is not what happens to you that really affects you is the meaning that you connect to what happens to you are we together if you recall in that teaching i taught you that what is the difference between falling under the anointing in church and falling under the anointing say in a restaurant all of them require you falling but while you fall under the anointing in church, you stand up rejoicing because you have associated a meaning to that experience, a meaning of growth, a meaning of ascending spiritually. So you're not embarrassed, male or female, young or old. But if you fall in a restaurant, that is not an impartation. Are we together? It's most likely a proof of maybe a show of mistake. You stepped on your feet or something and you feel embarrassed. The difference is the meaning. So for most of the pain that we keep carrying, most of the disappointments, you are the only one who is thinking like that. The world does not see it your way. You look at life from the lens of your mindset. Let me teach you something. You don't see with your eyes. You see through your eyes. Never forget that. You do not see with your eyes. You see through your eyes. That is the reason why a blind man can still see. Are we together now? Yes. Blind people still see. They don't just see clear enough to walk like we know with our eyes. But they still see. Their creativity is proof that they still see. Many people think that they see with their eyes. No, you see through your eyes. You see with your mind. Your mindset is the lens, the vista with which you view life. You can look at life from the lens of a defeated person. A defeated mindset will call a palace a hut. A defeated mindset will call glory shame. A defeated mindset will call process delay. A defeated mindset will call falling down as a result of learning amateurism. You will call it hopelessness. But a victorious mindset will reinterpret things. Let me tell you the truth. The quality of your life and your destiny in ministry, in business, in career remains at the mercy of the kind and the quality of beliefs that you inculcate. I've done several teachings along this line that our belief systems are largely shaped from culture, 
our past experiences when you come into Christ you must submit your mind for transformation It's one of the major assignments of the teaching ministry it's not just to enlighten you but to correct your understanding so the mentality that you have is edited using the reference of the Word of God and every mindset you have that is inconsistent with God's way you allow the Holy Spirit to gently do that work of editing. And then you find out that your life begins to evolve. It begins to change, reflecting that growth in your mindset. I recall teaching you that success is not what you pursue. Success is what you attract by reason of who you are becoming. And when I talk of becoming, I'm talking of growth in your mindset. My life changed when I found out that if I paid more attention to my mindset than my physical life, my physical life will eventually reflect my growth. The second key that makes for an excelling destiny is to contend for transformation a superior belief system. Number three, the third key that I've seen by the grace of God in my life, I have seen in the life of every man who has represented greatness in life, in destiny, and even in the Christendom, is to be valuable. Please write it down. The power of value. The third key that makes for a life of impact, glory, excellence, meaning, and fulfillment is to be valuable. In fact, I wrote here to be extremely valuable. Mark 1.37 Mark 1 37 extremely valuable and when they had found him they said unto him all men seek for thee this is the proof of value all men all nations all men does not just mean all humans it means business people seek for thee it means those who are in need of the touch of Jesus seek for you it means diplomats seek for you all kinds of people when you become valuable, all men will seek for you. Listen to what I wrote here. Your value and contribution determines your reward, your influence, and even your fulfillment. Let me say that again. Your value and contribution, as far as the lives and the destinies of men is concerned, your value and your contribution is what determines your reward, is what determines your influence and is what determines your fulfillment how true you cannot have an impactful life when you are not a contributor in terms of your value now we're not called to do everything in fact we're not called to have everything i think i was teaching our lovely school was it school of ministry students yes and i was telling them that there are things i cannot do there are things i'm not even interested in learning there are things I don't want to do. I don't want to become. It's not part of the script of my destiny. But there are certain things I must press onto until I become. Because it is part of the blueprint of my destiny. You're not called in destiny to be everything. You're not called in destiny to do everything. But the value and contribution that is required insist and ensure that you build capacity until you are able to deliver value extreme value by the privilege of god's grace we are gathered today to celebrate me by his grace i almost feel embarrassed saying this but i'm, I'm grateful to god for that if i did not contend for value number one you most likely would not know me or my life would not be significant enough for you to think that you need to invest your destiny, your attention, your loyalty, your support. You see that? In driving this vision. Value is very powerful. The cure for a life that is bankrupt of reward. The cure for a life that is bankrupt of influence. The cure for a life that is bankrupt of fulfillment is to be extremely valuable extremely valuable for someone you are that chef we're waiting for give your best to it for someone you are that apostle and that prophet the nations are waiting for give your best to it for someone you're that entrepreneur that needs to come and redefine the economy god's way 
to someone you are that politician who will rise with integrity and redefine how governance is done in the political space to someone you are that career person that needs to rise to the zenith of your profession by all godly means whatever it is that can make you valuable that you can serve the nation serve the purposes of god make lives better contend for it go for knowledge go for knowledge go for knowledge until you become extremely valuable number four the fourth key that is responsible for a life of impact i'm praying that you're learning and i'm praying that what you are receiving will help make major contributions to your becoming and your excelling number four master relationships master relationships psalm 115 verse 16 this is a very big secret to impact a very big secret to a life of influence a life of grace glory and fulfillment master relationships i have taught you and let me teach you again this morning that this is the world of men please say that after me this is the world of men one more time this is the world of men yes sir it is the world of men the bible says the heaven of heavens belongs to the lord but the earth that is where you are domiciled for now the earth hath he given not will he give hath he given to the children of men anything that will happen in your life will depend on relationships let me spare a few minutes here just to remind you of a few things i've said about relationships i will run them literally like i'm dictating a note please listen that destiny fulfillment is impossible without relationships i have taught you this and that relationships are advantageous connections they are connections that can lead to your glory and connections that can lead to your doom many people have been destroyed today because of relationships many destinies have been built and made today because of relationships i taught you also that relationships are currencies never forget that that they can buy anything money can buy they can also buy what money cannot buy let me say that again that relationships are currencies hard currencies they can buy anything money can buy and they can also buy things that money cannot buy i taught you that the easiest way to succeed in life is through relationships and destiny connections never forget this the easiest way that means if you don't have any advantage whatsoever in your life you feel you're not gifted you feel you came from a background with no honor no glory the easiest way to begin to scale yourself to an enviable destiny is to have correct relationships recall that i taught you that relationships is tripartite your relationship with god your relationship with men and your relationship with things your relationship with god the basis of your spiritual excellence your relationship with men and your relationship with things there is a way you can relate with God that translates to your profiting. There is a way you can relate with men that translate to your profiting. There is a way you can relate with things that translate to your profiting. For instance, money and material things. There is a healthy way of relating with things and there is a destructive way of relating with things. If you allow things to get into your heart, that becomes an unhealthy relationship. That leads to your destruction i was having a meeting back home just before i rushed to come here and while we we're discussing i just thought to myself again the power and the value of relationships you are as powerful on earth as the relationships that support your growth you are as powerful on earth as the relationships that endorse you you are as powerful on earth as the relationships that become ladders for your rising you are as powerful and on earth as the men and the women who have agreed 
to become allies to your greatness. Do not downplay relationships. I taught you how to maintain relationships. Let me remind you that you cannot re maintain relationships until you learn to rise above competitive jealousy. That you only maintain relationships when you avoid evil speaking. When you speak negatively, when you are careless with words, you will not be able to maintain relationships. Because as we say, what goes around will always come around. You say nasty things about people, it will return back to haunt you. Many, many people's destinies have been pegged and even locked indefinitely today because of careless use of words. They said something to someone yesterday, not knowing they were speaking to Joseph in the pit, who would later become Joseph on the throne. Are we together? Practice forgiveness, I taught you. Maintaining relationships. Practice tolerance. I told you the difference. I'm not telling you things I don't do. Honestly, this is my life. Practice forgiveness. Practice tolerance. Forgiveness means to grant pardon to an offender. But tolerance is to factor in the weakness and the limitations of people. Because it will happen again and again and again. Are we together? For instance, I gave in that teaching, a noisy person does not need forgiveness. He needs tolerance. Are we together now? So if a noisy person tells you sorry, and you say, I forgive you, um, you've not been well educated as far as spiritual intelligence is concerned. Being noisy is, does not require forgiveness. It requires tolerance because Two or three minutes after that, the person is still going to make noise again. Practice forgiveness and tolerance. Be an active contributor to the growth of the other party. A very powerful key to maintaining relationships. Be an active contributor, my God. Never embrace parasitic relationships. Do not be the only one receiving never be in a relationship where you are the only receiver and i have taught you here koinonia bless god for the truth you are learning oh honestly bless god for the truth you are learning it's true these are irrefutable principles if you don't have value to give give gratitude remember i have taught you Every time you don't have anything to give in a relationship, give gratitude, give honor. They are commodities. They can maintain relationships. So anytime you are in a relationship with someone and you don't know what to give, maybe you feel you don't have as much value. Maybe you feel you are not that educated. Maybe um, in terms of stratification, the person is far higher than you. Lavish that relationship with consistent gratitude and you would have matched up your contribution in that relationship i have seen this work like a charm i've seen this work sorry for using that expression but i for want of word i've seen it work in in a way that can only be termed magical that ordinary people you will wonder you will almost think they are unequally yoked it's just that it's not with unbelievers what is a great ceo doing with this orderly or this adc he may not even be so smart but one thing they know to do is to say thank you and that person will carry them everywhere and you say why do you love this person there are many gifted people and the great person will tell you a gifted rebel is not an asset the person who may not be gifted but has a heart of gratitude is by far more valuable than somebody who is gifted with the tendency of rebellion Are you learning? I would prefer a grateful person to an intelligent person. I will go through the rigor of building the grateful person and add intelligence to that heart because that gratitude means a lot to me than a PhD. I can pay the price and build a grateful person. But show me a gifted person who does not have gratitude. That is an intelligent disaster on its way to happen. 
be an active contributor never be part of any relationship that you are not adding to give me give me bad attitude give me give me on scriptural approach there are you know that you are becoming a parasite because people run away from you they don't want to pick your call they give all kinds of excuses immediately you see that let me give you intelligence once people start avoiding you go back use honor to open the door use gratitude to keep yourself there did you get that the moment a door closes this honor is looming around listen when you know these principles life will become so predictable the moment a door refuses to open just know that dishonor knowingly or unknowingly has found expression there I usually will have access to the office I will just open the door and the CEO says come but I'm noticing a body language that is not good how are you sir fine um, I'm here again okay God bless you I'm going safe journey immediately I can tell you with the intelligence of a consultant what is wrong is dishonor dishonor is looming somewhere and if that relationship is that valuable swallow your pride immediately and use honor to mend it sometimes you may not be wrong you are just disadvantaged so you'll be the one to reach out and mend it waiting until you are right will leave you in a lot of trouble that is the reality of our world. You will need to humble yourself and mend certain relationships so that you will not be the victim. And then use gratitude to secure your position. Let me tell you something about life. Everywhere you are standing, someone else is praying for it too. If you are careless with that position and you shift, you may not even have a space to return again. This is how destiny is. That God brought a strategic destiny helper are we together that God put you in a position in your corporation God brought certain uncommon relationships to you you see the flat tree of relationships is that you never imagine you can be replaced until you are careless and you move someone will say thank you Jesus I've been praying for this position of a secretary you took it for granted and as soon as they left you you wanted to come back but there was no space again many people listen mankind as a species we desire growth and growth is space dependent when there is no more space there is no growth so every time you are careless with the space god gives you you put yourself at risk say amen, amen. perhaps someone came to church today to learn this go back and re-examine your relationships when relationships benefit you drop pride don't say i don't care i can't say sorry what is there i don't want to look cheap i don't want to be a fool unfortunately you will still pay the price and be a fool while paying the price which is cheaper humility or suffering alienated from the privileges that come someone is paying your school fees and you cannot say sorry relationships master kindness don't be wicked if you are wicked you will not have friends and if you have those friends you only reproduce yourself in those relationships be kind the quality of being friendly the quality of being generous the quality of being considerate the quality of being hospitable has someone learned already yes it's a powerful principle A dear senior friend came to my house this morning and great man that I love and honor and respect so much. I was so humbled as he took the time to come, you know, packaged a gift for me and came and we're having a talk and I said, sir, you didn't have to do this. I mean, you're such a busy person. And he said, no, apostle. And I laughed. I remembered what I know. And I, there is no wondering why he's where he is. You see that? Every time relationships, listen, when God connects you to greatness, when God connects you to great people, he will not maintain it for you. It is your responsibility to maintain the greatness. Did you get that? Let me say that again. When God connects you to great people, don't wait for him to maintain it for you. 
make the extra effort to maintain quality relationships. Now, let me tell you this. When your investment in relationships is not genuine, you can be investing and there will still not be returns. Let me tell you what that means. When people know that the only reason why you are around them is because your hand is somewhere waiting for something to collect, every good thing you are doing becomes ugly immediately. Are we together? The beauty of investment in relationships is that there is authenticity and purity in it. You must learn this. That means when you are saying good morning, sir, I hope what you mean is I'm ready for the money. If that is what you mean, then the man will know that you are a psychophant and you are a hypocrite. And that greeting will not make sense again. So make sure that you are not just a parasite. Doing things because you feel, ah, this man has money, oh, let's treat him well. Sir, how are you? Can I clean your car? Can I clean your shoe? How about washing your clothes? I am at your service. And it's, you, are, you are speaking to money. You are not speaking to the man. People want you to love them for who they are, not for what they carry. The moment people find out you are around their life, you are dangling around, whether money or fame or power. Let me tell you, great people are not stupid. They know those who are around them genuinely out of love and those who are around them as parasites. That what lured them to, you to them, once it disappears, you go with them. Back then we used to call it friend for food, FFF. You see that? I remember then in secondary school, there used to be this group of people, they don't know you until visiting day. We have something called visiting day. When your parents come, they bring food, and you will see a cruel person who would not even have the, the courtesy to say hello, suddenly roaming around your corner. And you are, what are you doing here? Just checking up on you, making sure. So that's your mother. Wow, that's interesting. Looks like I've seen her. I know her somewhere. All that story is to get a share of the food. By evening, they have become their real self. Master relationships. Remember the four expressions I taught you? I'm sorry. See, remember it? Thank you. God bless you. Please. You've forgotten. You will need it, oh. That when you offend people, say, I am sorry. Don't say sorry. Who is sorry? Are we together? Please is a language of courtesy. It's an expression of courtesy. Don't tell someone, stand up. Call me. Call me back. The person wants to help you and you are saying, call me back. Learn to say thank you. If someone is kind to you a thousand times, say thank you a thousand times. Don't say I'm saying it too much. Then it means you want the kindness to stop. Learn to say God bless you. Hallelujah. Now let's go to number five very quickly. What is the fifth key that is responsible for a life of impact a life of grace and glory a life of meaning are you ready be a person of character be a person of character you must live by values if you want to be great there is no great person i know sustainably genuinely great who downplayed the relevance of character be a man or a woman of character. Proverbs 25 and verse 28. Please give it to us quickly. 25, 28 Proverbs. He that had no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Let me tell you this. You must be able to have control over your words. You must be able to have control over your conduct and your behavior. You will lose out a thousand times in life if you cannot control your words. James spoke to us about the, the seriousness of this tongue you see. There are many people who close the gates of their destiny because of careless use of words. They said things that should not be said and it went round and got to the ears of their helpers and those doors became shut. How about your conduct? Protocol is the expected behavior in any environment. Let me repeat that again. That protocol is the expected behavior in any environment. There is a way to behave. And don't say it does not matter. 
there are many people who don't behave well you go to an occasion the organizers have not eaten you are the first you just put your hand and say am i allowed to touch everything you touch both the ones that are for you and the ones that are not for you bad behavior and while people were praying you were praying they were already admiring you for your spirituality and you rubbish that that thing in at the table what demons could not do bad behavior has now done you see that now are we learning it's very important be a person of character a person of character be disciplined be diligent restrain yourself know when to speak don't cheapen your words no let your words carry your words are valuable when you spill your words out carelessly a time comes nobody takes you seriously even if you are serious do you know there are people if they are tell even if they are telling you somebody died you have to say show me the dead body first because they have a track record of their words have become so cheapened nothing they ever say is taken seriously be a person of character it's often said the anointing will take you up but it is character that will maintain you the anointing will take you up bring you greatness bring you to the table of greatness but if you lack character i give you an assurance under god nobody will follow you it's a matter of time you will be leading yourself nobody listen people don't just look for spirituality people don't just look for intelligence they look for character stability of mind nobody wants to follow a leader who is boisterous in your emotions you are not connected there is no stability you are so unpredictable people cannot say no to as touching this matter i can know that this is where this person stands if you don't have character you will not go anywhere are we together someone keeps money with you by evening you've taught something from the money and he said don't worry i know that it's just how life is no you have to be disciplined be a person a man or a woman of character are we learning let me give you the final key as far as a life of impact is concerned and I'm drawing this from my broadcast last year. The Spirit of God asked me to still remind you on that. And that's why I'm bringing it here. The third, the sixth key that is responsible for a life of impact is the power of purpose. The power of purpose. The power of purpose. I taught you last year, if you recall, that purpose answers the question, why? It is one question you must ask, why? Why do I want fame? Why do I want increase? In fact, motif is a subset of purpose. You see, if your motif is corrupted, is because you did not even know what the purpose was in the first place my greatly revered mentor of blessed memory dr miles monroe would say when the purpose of a thing is not known he says abuse is yes the word abuse means abnormal use use outside of its predefined purpose why do you want fame why do you want wealth why do you want anointing listen desires and pursuits only become profitable to us when they are connected to purpose this is powerful desires and pursuits any desire at all and any pursuit in life only becomes profitable when it is connected to purpose i want to be great why Apostle, I want to be a millionaire. I want to be a billionaire. Why? I want to be like you. Why? If you cannot ask, answer the question why, then you do not qualify to step into certain realms and certain dimensions in destiny. Asking the question why, I wrote here, is a powerful secret. Do you know what it does? It will help you 
tame your insatiable appetites. The question why always helps men to tame our insatiable appetites. There are appetites we have as men that it seems like it can never be satisfied. The question why brings it tames your appetites. It also tames from your life the temptation of vain living. The temptation of vain living. A man who cannot consistently ask the question why is the man who does not have control over his destiny. You will do anything that looks good. You will go anywhere that looks right. Why? Join this club. Why? Be part of Koinonia. Why? If you can ask the question why, you will be delivered from many troubles in your life. There are many people today who have gotten into trouble and they cannot answer the question why. Why did you join that chariot? Why did you join that association? Are we together? Why? Asking the question why is a secret that can help you tame your appetite. All things are lawful. Please look at me. But not all things are expedient. I have taught you that when Satan brings evil and you're not interested, he will bring good that is not connected to purpose. The most important thing is he wants your destruction. You must learn to ask the question why. I want to go to America. Why? To Canada. Why? To US. Why? I don't want to go. Why? I want to be a serious Christian. Why? I'm not interested in the things of God. Why? Always connect purpose. Once purpose is in place, then you are not afraid of pursuing things. You are not afraid of desire. If you tell me, Apostle, I want a billion naira, I'm not going to say you are joking. A billion. You spell it by yourself. No, I won't do that. I want a billion naira. I'm going to ask you the question, why? I'm just tired. I want to live a better life. Then you don't need a billion naira. No. You don't need a billion naira for a better life. You see that now? Why do you need a billion naira? I'm tired of poverty. I need to be rich. Too small a reason. Most people do not. They can't answer the question why. Why do you want the anointing? So that me too. People will know that I'm not a very a small person. Too small a reason. Beyond personal ambition, beyond the desire to outshine, beyond the desire to be successful and celebrated, we must seek to see Jesus revealed and Jesus glorified. That must be your biggest why. The why that drives your life. The why that literally pilots everything you do. Beyond personal ambition, which is not necessarily bad. Beyond the desire to be great, which is not necessarily bad. Beyond the desire to be successful, beyond the desire to be celebrated, beyond the desire for fame, for things, for progress, we must seek as the highest why, the highest priority to see Jesus Christ revealed in and through our lives and to see Jesus glorified. Are we together? Listen to me. I wrote something here and I wanted to listen. Manage the obsession for self-glorification. Manage. This is a message that is very important, especially for our world today. Manage the temptation, the craving for self-glorification. My one desire is that you be praised that you be praised that you be praised my one desire that you be praised that you be praised that you be praised as a person i'm not interested in any association any group any pursuit that cannot afford me the opportunity to reveal Jesus and bring him glory. 
that's why i'm not part of many things i'm not part of many associations once i cannot find in it an opportunity to reveal jesus i can wave you from afar carry your trouble and go my entire life revolves around revealing jesus did you hear what i said come and join this come on some of us are in all kinds of groups until you found out now you're on your way to hellfire they call you good it doesn't have to be demonic groups you are part of everything that has choked your opportunity to reveal jesus when you should go to church that's when they're having their meeting and because it's not a religious um, group they say you need to be there they made you secretary you later became chairman anything that interrupts an opportunity to be a serious christian to love jesus to build to grow to reveal him and glorify him is vanity as far as this life is concerned my one desire is that you be praised that you be praised that you be praised my one desire is that you be praised that you be praised that you be praised let me tell you this edit the activities in your life every activity and every pursuit in your life that is not directly connected to the revelation of Jesus and the glorification of the same let it mark time from today and you will find out that you have enough space there are not many things we're supposed to do in life is the vanity of our lives that has created so many activities in our lives that choke us and we cannot even sleep our world is full of this statement I am busy and if you edit the things we are doing I can tell you sincerely without exaggeration over 80 percent of our human activities on earth are unnecessary for our excelling and unnecessary as far as destiny is concerned just luggages that were choked upon that caravan called destiny it's time to put some of those things down there are many luggages you have been carrying. Throw them away. They have no value and no relevance. Not in your today. Not in your becoming. Not in your excelling. Not in your eternal destiny. Edit vanity from your life. So that your life is efficient enough. That everything you are doing has a direct bearing on the revelation of Jesus. I made a decision many years ago to decongest my life. I found out that there are many activities upon the face of the earth that are simply time wasters. You wouldn't know how much they waste your time until God helps you to progress in age. One day you will get up and say, so what returns have I gotten for investing my time in this mundane activity? Seven, let me give you the final key. Understand the brevity of life on earth. Mm. You want to live an impactful life? You want to live a life of meaning and fulfillment? Not without this understanding. Understand the brevity of life. Let me tell you the truth. Life is deceptfully short. 20 years looks far till you cover it 40 years looks far till you cover it 50 years looks far till you cover that distance 80 years looks far till you cover it do you know the celebration of birthdays is not celebrating how far you have come is also acknowledging how much is left did you hear what i said it is not just celebrating how far you have come listen it is celebrating how much is left so if you are 50 years today and you are supposed to live 80 years on earth you are not celebrating 50 years you are celebrating 30 years remaining if you are supposed to live 70 years 
and you are celebrating 65 years, what you are celebrating is five more years. How foolish do you want to live when you have five more years to live? I was watching one video of Reinhard Bonke five years ago. And I said, do you know five years ago, as at the time he was saying it, maybe he did not know that he had only five years. There are people who, as at January, they died in May. They didn't know that when they celebrated New Year, it was five more months to live. How would you live if you knew, not to make you afraid, that this is the last Joshua Selman's birthday you will see? If you are afraid of death, better come for an altar call when I make one. Imagine that by some way God reveals to you now that by December I will call you home. That means this is June, Abby, July, August, September, October, November, December. You have six more months. Then somebody who does not know where he's going comes to waste your time. And until October, you are still roaming around life and destiny. Listen to me. One day, you will not be here. Accept it or not. One day, you will not be here. Every dead body on earth is a sermon, a constant reminder that the clock of destiny is ticking. And one day it will stop. Did you hear me? Every dead body you see today, from today, see it as a sermon. Don't just see it as a corpse. Every dead body, some of those dead bodies were stubborn while they were alive. Some of those dead bodies were arrogant. They said they would not die. Some of those dead bodies carried stubborn spirits. Some of those dead bodies carried arrogant spirits. Some of those dead bodies carried wicked spirits. Some of those dead bodies carried godly and prepared spirits. But in any case, it's now a dead body. You don't call a dead body a preacher. You don't call a dead body an armed robber. Let me tell you the truth. My life changed when I began to walk in the consciousness of the brevity of life. It didn't put fear. It just brought an awareness. An awareness in me. When people die, especially people around at least my ministerial sphere of influence. I'm usually the first they reach and they say, so, so, so person has died. You see that? And while I condone with the family and console them, I use that dead body as a message again. There was a day that dead body had a sermon too. There was a day that dead body had a preacher say, one day you will die. And the dead body said, yes. Now that dead body is the one who is being used as the sermon. Let me tell you the truth. We are not called to fear death. It's not a wise way to live. We are called to be aware that life, like the hymn writer would say, life at best is very brief, like the falling of a leaf. Are we together? Like the binding of a sheep. Life at best is very brief. Whether you listen and take me serious or not, here connected and following across the globe, one day if Christ tarries, your children or your grandchildren will have a cause to be surrounded around your corpse. And you will be dug six feet. And they will say, here lies the body of XYZ. The question is where you will be when all that is done. Because this body you see returns to dust. But cessation of living never happens. You never cease living. Dimensions change. This is why it is foolish to live life as if you indefinitely have the power to decide whether you will go or not. It's not true. It's not true. It's not true. There are many people who were on earth. Do you know there are people who were alive on Sunday as I was preaching, but today they are gone. This Sunday, I mean Sunday. Maybe they were preparing to connect online again and listen next Sunday. And by this morning, it was over already. 
So teach us to number our days. Teach us to number our days. Do you know? When you have this understanding, you will focus on the things that matter and you will not waste your time and your life on vanities. Are we together? Many of us today will not love the Lord and will not serve the Lord because of mundane things. Money, house, car. By the time you die, that car will not go with you. By the time you die, that promotion will not go with you. I'm not saying to be earthly irrelevant, but I'm saying burn it in your heart. Carry this consciousness that every other thing only finds its relevance provided you are alive. So that in being alive, in order of priority, the first thing you should secure is your state with God. That I have peace with God. And that you get to a point where like Paul, you say, for me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. I wonder how many people can make that statement in this place. That in truth, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Hallelujah. If Christ tarries, I don't want to get out of this world as a defeated loser, a failure. No, no. I want to design my own exit by myself. That I would conquer life, finish my assignment with joy, be a blessing to creation, and with health and vitality and with joy, I would look at life and say, I came, I saw, I conquered. You sign out with honor and leave. Yes, sir. To be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. All that fear you are seeing is only those who are watching you. As a dead person, that transition is so instant. You will not even know what is happening. I can tell you that for free. All the pity you pity dead body is because you are alive. The person transiting the, is, is instant. That's it. Like the blinking of your eye, realities change immediately. And what becomes the, 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 the compass to where you go after then is your believing in Jesus Christ, your walking in his ways and living a life of meaning. I would not be so foolish as to make many things a priority above Jesus. No. Till he returns or oh, calls me home here in the love of Christ, I stand till you return or oh, call me home. Here in the love of Christ, I stand till he returns or oh, calls me home. I want to give thanks and gratitude to God Almighty. I want to thank him. Lamentation chapter 3 from verse 21 says, It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. It says, Because his compassions, they fail not. I am today a product of God's mercy. And if there is anything you have seen that is worthy of celebration, I owe it to God. I owe it to God. I owe it to God. I owe it with all my heart to God. I want to thank God for life. I want to thank God for health. I have traveled by road, traveled by air, and he has preserved me. I've passed the same pathway that others went and died. I want to thank him for that grace. Hallelujah. I also want to thank the Koinonia Global family. Thank you. Thank you. And I mean this from the depth of my heart. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your loyalty. Thank you for your support. Thank you for upholding the vision from Nigeria to UK to America to Canada, several parts of Africa. 
Thank you. It is one thing for God to call a man. It's another thing for you to understand your call and to be willing to give your best. But it is a great blessing when God grants you access to the hearts of men who love you sincerely and believe in you. I pray the prayer. Thank you so much. I love you too. I pray the prayer unto God. Listen carefully. And I told God something. I said, God, my own commitment is I will be the best of a shepherd, a teacher, a father that I can be to my people. But give me the gift of good and faithful people. All these headaches that men of God go through in ministry, I'm, I'm tired of. Everybody has his share of his own, but your share can be small. It's a cause when your share of trouble is so much. Trouble from today. You don't trust anybody. You don't know who. I don't want that, that, that trouble. And God answered that prayer. I'm grateful to you. Thank you, Koinonia. Thank you for your diligence, your discipline, your love and loyalty. I want to thank the body of Christ. Part of my assignment is to the body of Christ. I have an expression of my mandate for living um, to the body of Christ, helping to bring the body of Christ to a state of balance, maturity, love. And I really want to thank the body of Christ in Nigeria, the body of Christ in Africa, the body of Christ all over the globe. I hear, I hear of preachers who were driven out of certain nations. I hear of preachers who are only accepted in certain regions. There is no region in Nigeria that has rejected me. There is no region in Nigeria that has rejected me. By the grace of God, I've been everywhere in this nation. No region at all. There is no region in this nation that I do not have friends, good people, faithful, sincere people. There is no nation I've traveled to across Africa that has rejected me. It's been with graciousness. It's been with love. Hallelujah. I am humbled and even amazed at how far this ministry and the teachings have gone. And the nameless, faceless people who have broken this barrier of regional divides and carried these teachings cross-culturally across the globe. I am grateful. Thank you. Thank you for helping me serve Jesus. Thank you for helping me love Jesus. Thank you for helping me live for him. Hallelujah. I must say this. The body of Christ, that includes the fathers of faith within this nation. Thank you for your advice, your counsel, your rebukes, your correction, your instructions in righteousness. I want to thank all the senior men of God in this nation. I honor you in your various capacities. I want to thank God for my contemporaries in ministry. I thank God for the privilege of partnership in various ways. And I want to thank God for those that God has brought that we are raising sons, daughters, protégés, mentees. Thank you. Thank you for your love, your loyalty in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me speak over your life now as we close. You don't have to kneel. Please just stand and I will pray for you from my heart. Birthdays are days when unusual requests are granted. It was during a birthday that a prophet's head went away. Expensive requests can be granted. Is there anyone who is ready to sing that song for me? I will exalt you. Where's that? Which of the ladies know how to sing that song? Or Dave, any one of you, sing that song for me. Let me 
ministry that I will never lack help in my life. And he has kept that word. Let me speak that word to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak over you by the message of God. You will never lack help for the rest of your life. You will never lack help us for the rest of your life. You will never lack help for the rest of your life. You will never lack help us for the rest of your life. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Your speed in destiny is to the degree to which you are accepted. If you are not accepted, you cannot make progress in life. I'm praying for you. The same way God gave me global acceptance, I pray for a preacher in the name of Jesus. I pray for a businessman. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, may you be accepted across the globe. May your ministry be accepted across the globe. May your business be accepted across the globe. May your person be accepted across the globe. In the name of Jesus. One day I was praying and I came across that scripture that the Lord told Moses. He says, the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Listen. And I remember the Lord telling me that day. He said, in ministry, never try to fight any battle. It doesn't matter who rises up against you. There is a covenant that I have with you that I will defend you with my jealousy. You always hear me say that the God of my covenant, this is where it came from, that I have a covenant with you that I will stand by you as a mighty terrible one. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. May this covenant begin to work for you. That anybody who rises against you, against your reputation, against your relevance, against your influence, before their eyes, God will bring them down. Before their eyes, God will lift you up. Before their eyes, God will bring them down. In the name of Jesus. Number three. I was studying one time and I saw where he told them, he said, when I sent you, lackest thou anything. When I saw the gravity of the work that God was committing to my hands, I knew that they would need resources, both human and material resources. And I said, Lord, I want to do ministry with integrity. I don't want to have to manipulate anyone for money. I don't want to have to manipulate anyone to come in terms of membership. And that was when I learned about the power to prosper and the grace called favor. That favor can come upon a man the power to prosper can come upon a man and redefine your finances. I tell you in the name of Jesus and without any sense of humility, this ministry does not owe anybody one naira, dead or alive. We don't borrow, we don't beg. I don't borrow, I don't beg. It's part of our covenant with God. I'm praying for you. God who has shown mercy in the name that is above all names and by the power that raised Christ from the dead step into a level of supplies supplies by wisdom supplies by favor supplies by wisdom supplies by favor I say it again supplies by wisdom supplies by favor in the name of Jesus Christ before needs arise, let the supply be waiting. Listen, in your lifetime, you would do multi-billion projects without begging. <laughs> Hallelujah. I saw the way many people handled the issue of finances and I did not want it. Those who had money had a lot of pride and materialism it looked like everything was about money and i did not want to be a preacher like that i didn't want to be incapacitated financially but i didn't want my life and this ministry to be all around money i said god you must teach me those who missed it where did they miss it so that we can correct it and god said the thing is i can give you things but let it not get to your heart 
and let it not become your emphasis let jesus remain your emphasis while the blessings help you announce him by the time you leave jesus and you start announcing the blessings it turns to idolatry i said that's it i found the key let me pray for you while god increases you these things will not get to your heart while god increases you money and fame and power will not get to your heart it will not distract you in the name of jesus but i hear me if you are part of this vision i speak to you you will lay gold as dust oh secrets will be shown you you will see things others don't see he will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places in the name of jesus christ hallelujah there is a hear ye him anointing that is responsible for influence even global influence a product can carry that grace a person can carry that grace a ministry can carry that grace i was not born global nobody is born global you define your possibilities by the graces that come upon you i pray for you right from where you are in the name that is above all names may the nations hear your voice right from where you are may the nations hear your voice may they hear your voice in ministry may you hear your voice as a business person as a career person every power territorially every power foundationally that fights the voices of people stopping them from rising silencing their voices upon the mountains so that it will not be heard i cause those voices now i cause those spirits now i cause those influences now in the name of jesus there are angels mandated to herald men herald visions revelations 1 verse 1 he sent it and signified it by his angel he sent it and signified that message by his angel there are angels that herald anointings they herald the coming of men they make territories accept men they take the glad tidings of the hand of god upon your life publicity is a spiritual affair it's not by posters and billboards alone no in the name of jesus where you have not gone to may your name get there where you have not gone to may your teachings get there where you have not reached may your products reach there in the name of jesus christ hallelujah listen to me i learned from dr miles munro that influence is a very great key in commanding kingdom advance i have taught you what is influence the ability to make men buy into your ideologies your beliefs without using force or cruelty can i tell you if you lack this grace for influence it doesn't matter how right you are nobody will listen to you hallelujah you don't have to manipulate people to believe you you don't have to manipulate people to hear you you don't have to manipulate people and say don't listen to this one listen to it no no you don't have to when that grace is on you that grace can cause men to listen to you i'm praying for you in the name of jesus like you have never seen you will command the loyalty of kings you will command the loyalty of nobles you will command the loyalty of both great and small male and female in the name of jesus men will look for you they will come to you in the cave of adulam and they will say be lord over us in the name of jesus christ hallelujah two more prayers the grace for humility listen let me tell you this i learned early in life the danger of of pride that it is the one thing that can make god fight you people have done all kinds of things against god in the bible he forgave them but the one thing that god does not tolerate is pride that god himself resisted opposes the proud 
and gives grace to the humble. Let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus, your lifting will not be why you go down. I say it again. Your lifting will not be why you go down. Your rising will not be why you fall. Let the spirit of pride die from your life now. Let the spirit of boasting and bragging vain glory, let it die now. The grace for humility, receive it. Humility is not rejecting what God has done. No. Humility is the ability to decrease and project Christ as the basis for all you are and all you have become. Let that grace rest upon you. Final prayer and we're done. The grace for honor. Let me tell you what honor is. Honor means to be perceived correctly and to be rewarded to match your sacrifice. If the grace for honor is not on you, you may be rewarded, but you will not be rewarded to match the level of your sacrifice. There are people like that. They are not promoted to match their sacrifice. You see that now? It's not that their hands are empty, but they know they are far greater than that level. It says, thou shalt take Joshua, the son of Nun, in whom is the spirit, and thou shalt lay your hands upon him. Verse 20 says, thou shalt put some of thine honor upon him, that all the congregation of Israel might be obedient unto him. I'm praying for you. Let honor rest on you. Let honor rest on you. You have honored Jesus. You have honored me. Let honor rest on you. As a man of God, let honor rest on you. In the name of Jesus. It is not just men that will look for you. Governments will look for you. I say it by the message of God. Governments will look for you. Their parliaments will look for you. Institutions will look for you. Nobles will look for you. Gentiles will look for you. Even those you are looking for will look for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because you came here to celebrate with me. If Christ tarries, even 30 years after now, you will still be standing. You will still be standing. You will not fall by the wayside. It will never be said you, were, you once were great. It will never be said you once were spiritual. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God has declared that this is our year of exceeding great rewards. I pray for you. Whatever has not entered your hand and is still hanging in the spirit, I declare let it enter your hand this week. Let it enter your hand this week. Let it enter your hand this week. As God lifts me, may he lift you. As God helps me, may he help you. As God shows me mercy, may he show you mercy. In the name of Jesus. Anybody waiting for your downfall will wait forever. I say it again. Anyone waiting for your downfall will wait forever. But as for you, keep going higher. Keep going higher from glory to glory from grace to grace the lord increase you more and more you and your children in the name of jesus give jesus a big hand clap give him a big hand clap god bless you hallelujah thank you please allow me make an altar call there's no assumption i cannot waste this gathering of people here Every time we're gathered, there has to be someone that is added by God to be saved. This is a birthday broadcast, but any opportunity to reveal Jesus is an opportunity that will be greatly maximized. Someone came for this broadcast, you were invited, or you are following online, and you are saying, Apostle, as I listen to you teach, I was convicted by the Spirit of God that here can be my chance to make it right with Jesus. Or it may be that you want to rededicate your life. You're saying, I've not been living my life the way I should live it. I can't say for sure that my relationship with Jesus is intact. 
but I do not want us to end and just go now for the welfare distribution or maybe you even came your own is rice that brought you here you came to carry something and go back thank God for it but before Jesus fed them he revealed himself to them are we together now I'm going to count one to five please give me an opportunity to lead you to this Jesus not another one the one who changed my life the one who's changed the life of thousands in this place as I count one to five I want you to leave your seat gallantly gloriously please come let's present these souls to Jesus come come keep clapping for them koinonia keep coming come allow those who came for welfare join them before you go to collect your rice give your life to Jesus Christ God bless you keep clapping koinonia Hallelujah. I'm honored to present these souls to Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Many of you came here for the welfare distribution. You are most welcome and God bless you. But there is a greater one. Greater than bags of rice. Greater than whatever welfare that connection your relationship with Jesus Christ <laughs> hallelujah now I'm going to ask you if you are joining them please come quickly I'm going to ask you to lift your right hand high above your head look at me don't just say this because I'm saying it mean it from your heart Jesus is in this place he says where two or three are gathered in his name he's there in their midst say after me Lord Jesus Say it again, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for me right now. I receive you into my heart as my Savior, my Lord and my king I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight I am a child of God I go forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father thank you thank you thank you it's a joy to present this many saved, washed by the blood of the Lamb. I decree and declare that the power to live a victorious Christian life, let it be imparted upon you. God who brought you here today, he begins a journey in your life that will never end. In the name of Jesus, you go from glory to glory, grace to grace, in the name of Jesus. Now please look at me all of you. I want you to turn to my right. You're going to see the counselors. They are waving their placard at you. Please do well. There are a number of you. Please cooperate with them. They will have a word with you very quickly. And then you will be back. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate them. A quick word and then you'll be back. Keep clapping until the last person is left.
God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, just one announcement and then we shut down. I want to say thank you to everyone. I'm sure that many of you came directly from your offices, your places of work. Thank you very much for this sacrifice. I consider it an honor to Jesus and to me and I'm deeply grateful. Very, very grateful. Thank you. Um, immediately after now, we're going to share the grace. And so our family, those who are connecting online, this is about it. God bless you. Thank you for wishing me a happy birthday. It's a birthday for all of us. Whatever happens to me happens to us also. It's our birthday together. <laughs> Hallelujah. The greatest way you can celebrate my birthday is number one, to pray for me, which you have done. Number two, help someone know Jesus. If someone is saved today, in honor to this birthday, you have given me a great birthday gift. Hallelujah. And then make up your mind to live a purposeful and a meaningful life. These three things, if you do that, you have completed that honor for me. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Immediately afterwards, there's such a crowd of people. Um, we'll go straight. After this, we're dismissed. You can go. But for some of the workers who will still need to be around so that um, we'll manage the welfare, I'll just go out and speak a blessing over the people. I won't be there just to speak a blessing. And so security, technical protocol, please take note of that. As soon as we're done, just hang around a bit. Um, I know that a few of you came with gifts and the rest. Again, I feel embarrassed. Um, I'm not a very good receiver. I'm learning. Pray for me in the name of Jesus Christ. So I'll just hang around a bit, just greet for a few. There's no counseling. Please, if you are here for counseling, come back on, on um, Sunday, please. There's no counseling now. I know some of you, even on this birthday, you will still come and stand for counseling. Of course, I'm called to serve you, but just allow me rest today. Praise God. Are we together? Immediately that is done. Please, if you are here for the distribution, now everyone as much as possible, uh, I don't know how many, I hope it will go around. If it doesn't go around, don't find offense. I'm grateful to other people who contributed. I got to know that there were many other people who said, Apostle, we can't let you do this alone. This is your birthday. This is this bag of rice. I want to say a big thank you. Thank you to all of you. You didn't have to do that, but I'm grateful for that thoughtfulness. And so we've gathered everything outside. I don't know how many will go around, but um, we'll, we'll give honor to the less privileged. We'll start from there, but eventually... Please make sure that no single bag is left. There's no reason why some bags should be carried back. There will be somebody who needs it, right? If we've exhausted all the people, there are people within the workforce and so on and so forth. And perhaps maybe for someone following online, you can have your small scale welfare to honor the birthday in your little way. Even if it's two people, you pay their school fees, you give them some groceries. It's something that is a great blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Father, again, we thank you for this opportunity. It's a privilege to be alive. I have charged your people by your spirit. I pray in the name of Jesus that these words will burn in their hearts, in our hearts together. You have given us life. With this life, give us wisdom. With this life, give us ease. With this life, give us favor. With this life, grant us grace to continually do more for you that by this time next year, that the things we would have done for the kingdom would dwarf all that we have done until now in the name of Jesus. And for everyone who has come here, the sound of mourning will be far from your house. You have come to rejoice with me. Joy and gladness will remain with you forever in Jesus' name. After, um, please don't come to say happy birthday just for a handshake. Happy birthday, I'm saying it on your behalf from here. We may not have all that time so please don't be embarrassed if it's just for a handshake my apologies that may not be possible but just know that i love you with all my heart as you go home immediately after the grace my god will bless you in the mighty and matchless name of jesus let's share the grace the grace of our lord jesus christ the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore amen surely god's goodness and mercies follow us 
forever and ever. Amen. God bless you all. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching this from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life, that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.